our first full day of spring. We reached the equinox last night at 11.06 p.m. Eastern. The sun precisely on the equator and starting its trek into the northern hemisphere. The world's hotspot still found in the southern hemisphere, South Africa, Fjostrif, reporting 113 degrees. And that is some very hot terrain. Looks a little bit like Arizona. The world's cold spot, well, outside of Antarctica, it's still up there in Canada. Minus 41 at Eureka, a little research station on Elamir Island. And that's a look at the environment. Not a tree to be found. Here in the U.S., the great warm-up is underway, but another outbreak of cold air sweeping through the northeastern U.S. and the Midwest region. The 540 decameter thickness line all the way down to St. Louis and down into the Chesapeake Bay region. Stationary front from north of Atlanta to north of Oklahoma City and cyclogenesis underway in Wyoming, where we're expecting a winter storm to come together in the northern plains. The 500 millibar chart showing a meridional flow. We've got strong northwesterly flow from central Canada into the Great Lakes region. Also seeing split flow. That's going to be the northern stream. And down to the south in the Gulf of Mexico, we have the southern stream. In between, weak Rex block across the western U.S. That's in the process of breaking up. Then we're going to see this next trough coming in from the Pacific. To really look at the jet stream patterns, we need to go up to 250 millibars. This is up at about 34,000 feet. We see a couple features here. One is this anticyclonically curved jet. That's an indicator of possibly some interaction with a subtropical jet. Winds out there about 100 knots across Alabama and Georgia. Here we have that closed low in Arizona starting to open up and move into the southern plains. Up to the north, there's the northern stream coming from central Canada into the Great Lakes region. And further to the north, a cold pool, minus 44 degrees up there at 250 millibars. And if we drop down to 700 millibars, about 10,000 feet, we can see that cold air across the Great Lakes region, minus 24 to minus 26 Celsius at 700 millibars. So that's a sign of strong cold air advection moving into the northeastern states. And this has become an exceptionally common pattern. Cold air advection, cumuliform clouds. And I remember last spring, we were seeing this all the way through April, May, and even into June. Just strong, cold advection, day after day, week after week. And I guess we're seeing the same thing once again this spring. Anyway, snow squalls across parts of the Northeast, and especially in Ontario, and there are some patches of heavy snow here and there. We do have a winter storm warning in northwestern New York around Oswego for two to four inches of snow for the rest of today. Winter weather advisories up to Watertown, also in so southwestern Vermont. And in eastern Maine, we do have a winter storm watch for tonight through Thursday afternoon. Five to ten inches of snow possible there. That includes Bangor, Holton, and Caribou. Down to the south, very strong winds mountain wave activity shown on the satellite imagery, and they do have a red flag warning across much of the state, Virginia, all the way back to the mountains of West Virginia for today. In the southeastern U.S., fair skies, but we do know that we have a jet across the Gulf Coast region running west to east, and as we go further to the west, we get into higher precipitable water values. And there you go. You can see it for yourself half an inch of precipitable water around Jacksonville, and as you go to the west, we get rapidly into one-inch values around Houston, Beaumont, Corpus Christi, and even near 1.5 in South Texas. And we'll give you a preview of that forecast going through tonight and into tomorrow. Moisture advecting northward 1.5 into Houston for midday tomorrow and an axis all the way up towards the Arklatex region and pretty much the entire Gulf Coast region being inundated by tomorrow evening. Of course, this time of year, I am concerned about the potential for severe weather. 
Well, what do we see here at 850? We've got a front right there. You can see the stronger temperature gradient through the central U.S. And then we've got deep return flow setting up in Texas and Oklahoma. Only about 15 knots at the present time overnight, strengthening to about 25 on the cap rock. And then tomorrow as we get heating, most of the stronger dynamics down to the south, about 25 knots into the Houston area, and then shifting over to Louisiana. Looks like about 40 knots right there south of New Orleans, 30 knots through Louisiana. So we will have to watch for severe potential tomorrow night, although SPC did not extend that very far north. In terms of dynamics, what are we looking at? Well, we do know that that upper level low is starting to eject eastward, opening up and getting caught up in that westerly flow there. There's one lobe of vorticity south of Arizona, and as we go through the overnight hours, that moves into the El Paso area, lift spreading over that region, and then moving into the Midland area for tomorrow, Fort Stockton, Midland, and I guess around, uh, what else is there, Levaland, and then spreading eastward into the hill country for tomorrow. This is when we get the heating, so probably this entire area will have to be watched for tomorrow. And then as we go into the evening hours, I-35 corridor down to Houston and those dynamics carrying eastward. So by Friday morning, severe potential in the southern U.S. So clearly with that low bit of vorticity coming out of northwest Mexico and southern Arizona, there probably is some baroclinicity in the atmosphere through here. Can't really resolve very well where that front is, but likely... Yeah, there's probably a little bit of frontogenesis in there, very complex setup, and that will shift eastward into Texas for tomorrow. And of course, we have things coming together there in the northern plains. You can see that next winter storm developing. Not all that severe, but uh, that will have impacts in parts of South Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin for later tomorrow. How much in terms of impacts? Well, have a look. This runs through early Saturday, a track of six-inch snow from Bismarck to just south of Fargo, tapering down to about four to five inches around Minneapolis and then picking up again to about six inches north of Milwaukee. This is official forecast data. This is the National Digital Forecast Database. So this is probably about as accurate as we'll get and heavier amounts forecast for central Michigan for Friday and Saturday. Conditions in the North Pacific looking rather quiet, although there is one moderately strong system off the Oregon coast. The storm track, we can infer that by looking at the thickness patterns, running about like this. So it has shifted south a little bit. So we're heading into a slightly stormier period of weather for this week. Checking out Canada, we can see why it was so cold up there in the high Arctic. A ridge of polar air extending from the Beaufort Sea into the Canadian prairies. That's a large ridge of cold air, although the central pressure only about 1036 millibars in the strongest cold air outbreaks we tend to see about 1050 to 1060. So nothing like that, but it is a pretty healthy push of cold air coming mostly into the northeastern U.S. and the Great Lakes. Checking out the Atlantic for anybody that's aboard the Titanic right now. It's actually around the time of the year that it sank right in this region right here. So stormy and cold air coming down through the Labrador Sea, that's pretty common this time of year. Most of the warm air advection focused on the British Isles. So we've got flow coming in from the southwest, bringing warm air advection clouds and precipitation to the British Isles. A weak frontal system moving through Denmark and through Belgium, the Netherlands, and France with a warm front out there in eastern Germany. So what weather are we going to see here in the U.S.? Well, this time of year, moisture from the Gulf is a critical component. So bringing this forward through the rest of the week, by the time we return for Friday's show, one big plume, some of it pushed up there into the Mississippi River, another plume into Georgia and Florida, 1.5-inch precipitable water coming into Florida itself. So it looks like a wet period there some drying for the weekend. This implies a fetch of dry air coming in from Canada into much of the eastern U.S. However, for late in the weekend, 
return flow setting up in the Great Plains once again, up to three quarters of an inch precipitable water by Sunday and up to one inch all the way up to Oklahoma City. And it looks like for later Sunday into Monday, possibly an MCS driving eastward into the southern U.S., Return flow setting up once again for Thursday and Friday. And it looks like another period of rain for late in the week. You can see by Friday the 29th going into the 30th, some very stout moisture up to 1 to 1.5 inch precipitable water all the way into Maryland, Virginia, and New Jersey. So let's look at the forecast. The main story for people in New Hampshire and Maine will be this coastal low, which will be tracking up there towards Bangor around midnight, producing bands of snow, and then it will be quickly out of the picture, replaced by that strong cold advection. So we'll have probably another day of snow in parts of the northeast before the ridging builds in and it winds down. And then we shift our sights west to this Great Plains system, a large band of overrunning and frontogenesis helping to support some heavier snow amounts up to about four to six inches for the most part, as we pointed out from about Bismarck down towards Milwaukee. And then we've got another weather system coming onto the West Coast. But those snow levels, initially about 6,000, those will be dropping down to about three to 4,000 as that system clears out. Anyway, this weather system will be traversing the Rockies during the weekend and then evolving into this next winter storm for Sunday and Monday. So a return to snowy weather for Minneapolis and probably Duluth as well for early next week. Plunge of cold air southward into the Great Plains for Monday. Down to the south, storms for Texas. Period of dry weather for the central U.S. And then our next shot of Pacific energy working eastward. This is a little bit more indeterminate. I've seen the model flip-flopping quite a bit on this next system. And since it's a high meridional pattern with the waves way upstream out there in Asia, we're not going to really be able to pin this down until maybe early next week. And here you can see that wedge of cold air. The orange colors, minus 30 to minus 40 Fahrenheit up there at Elamir Island, and minus 10s to minus 20s all the way from Victoria Island down towards Hudson Bay. And of course that will branch mostly into Quebec and Maine. And if you want to track it, here's the forecast sequence for temperature. The purple color indicating temperatures close to zero Fahrenheit, mostly sweeping into Montreal and Vermont. Here's our next weather system coming together in the northern plains for Friday. That will bring down some cold air into North Dakota. Temperatures around 20 degrees there, but it gets hung up by the next round of cyclogenesis on Sunday. This will be a little bit stronger and bring more cold air southward. You can see right there, stout northerly flow. Temperatures about 10 degrees on average up there in North Dakota. And it looks like Monday night will be a cold night. Same for Tuesday night, but we're mostly talking about the northern tier states. That cold air just does not want to come south. In fact, the Gulf already opening up once again. And we get into the later chart sequences for late next week. And that's about as far as we're going to get. More cold air coming down once again for late in the week, but not going to see much in the way of bitterly cold air, though. And that will be it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I did want to say a few words about this program. I'm pretty sure that had we brought in sponsors and do what other YouTubers do, this would be a completely different program. Instead of going down that road, I rely on you as Patreon supporters. So if you're enjoying it and you want to keep me here broadcasting to you all through the week, doing the same sort of format, I do need that support. And I do have a lot of competition with my time having to do the books and software. It is very time consuming, so your support is urgent. All right, that will be it for today. Thank you for watching. And hopefully we'll see you back here again on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.